Hi, I'm Chad from Chad DIY. In today's video, we are checking out this longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. So let's get started. So I do have multiple 3D printers in my shop here. 3D printing is probably my favorite hobby, I guess. I'm doing uh, laser cutting, 3D printing, woodworking, all kinds of stuff. But as far as just the hobby side of things, 3D printing is where it's at. And so Longer reached out to me and wondering if I wanted to test out their 3D printer. And I saw the size of it and I thought, uh, absolutely. So currently in my shop right now, I just basically have uh, what you call maybe standard size 3D printers. I think they're 220 by 220 millimeter uh, work bed. And this guy is 300 by 300 up to 400 millimeters. So you're gonna have a huge surface area to work with, which I was really excited about. Now when it came to assembly of this machine, got in the mail, packed very nicely, unbox everything. It actually comes, I believe, about 90% assembled is what they say. So assembly, if you've done, if you've assembled other things like a 3D printer, I don't think you're gonna have any issues. The instruction booklet is tiny, and it is tiny because you don't need an instruction booklet that's very big because there are seven steps. And so if you put together other 3D printers, uh, usually there's a lot more than seven steps. So assembly, uh, real straightforward, uh, nice process, uh, no problems at all there. So one thing you might notice that's not super common with 3D printers, it's what's going on with these brackets here. So this thing is actually so tall, it comes with these kind of stabili stabilizing brackets. They're very adjustable, which, which is really great because sometimes uh, this top section that goes up here can really get obscured. So if you see my hand, it's hard to keep it at a perfect 90 degree angle. So with these support brackets here, I was able to put my level on this thing, uh, square it all up. And so when you're doing really large 3D prints, you're not gonna have any shifting as it goes up. So really cool, cool feature. I, I've seen that, I guess, on some of the bigger ones just online, but haven't seen that in person. I always thought it looked a little weird. I didn't quite know what, that was, what was going on with that, but really cool feature to have with a bigger 3D printer like this. Next thing I want to note for installing it, and they do make it very clear, they have a couple stickers, but this thing is set up where you can, it's 220 volt or 240, probably 220, 110, 115, I don't know, a lot of different numbers, but basically if you're in America, uh, you're gonna have the 110 or 120 or whatever you wanna to refer to it as, but there is a little switch you have to switch on the side. I think they actually have it 115. So you have a 115, probably 230 volt then as well. So they are gonna have a sticker on the front screen that just reminds you, hey, you gotta know what you're plugging into. So it did come with the switch on the 230. So you're gonna to wanna to be aware of that if you're in the United States or whatever, you're gonna to have to do that switch first. Really easy to do. Uh, it is actually hidden behind a sticker. So you gotta peel back that sticker, but just something to note before you get this thing started, if you're a little confused about that, make sure you know what uh, power you have at your outlet, and then uh, make sure that switches according to that. A few little add-ons besides the printer itself that it comes with. It does have a, a scraper, so for getting prints that are stuck, kind of scraping it off. It does come with a tiny little bit of filament now. If you're brand new to 3D printing, this is not enough filament. Uh, maybe just to get you started with a tiny little print, but you're definitely gonna wanna buy filament as well. It does come with a USB adapter to plug into your computer as well as a micro, US, a micro SD card, I should say. So you can transfer files from your computer right away. You don't have to buy anything separate. It does not come with, however, uh, little clippers there. So if you, once again, or if you're brand new to 3D printing, you're gonna definitely want one of those for clipping the filament. If you have a 3D printer already, you already have one of these, so it doesn't matter. But uh, definitely get one of these. It doesn't come with it, so important to know. So another thing to note is this comes with a glass bed. Now, I'm a huge fan of glass beds. That's all I use. I've tried other material, um, and I just haven't had great luck with it. Glass has always been what I've liked the best. To me, when it heats up, it holds very well. When when it cools down, it releases very well. So I've had other materials that hold very well, the releasing aspect of it, not so much, so you really are gonna need a scraper. But with glass, I've never really had an issue. Now, it is two-sided glass, where you're gonna have, I don't even know what you would refer to the top, um, kind of sticky material on the top, and then you could flip around with just the glass. 
But I'm going to start with uh, the kind of grippy side of the glass. We'll see how that works. Normally I just use glass and hairspray as the spray on hairspray is kind of my standard routine for, for getting uh, prints to stick very well and release very well after they're done. But uh, we'll try it out with just this top part of the glass here. All right, a few other features that this printer does have. It does have resume printing if the power goes out. Uh, pretty handy if you ever lose that power. It can resume back to your spot. Has filament sensors, so if you run out of filament, also will stop and kind of keep its place. It does have a high temp heat nozzle the Teflon tubing, so you can do um, higher temperature materials like ABS. So kind of cool. Cool little features to have, and especially in such a budget-friendly machine. This machine is uh, usually around $300. You can find it, or $300 or less. So very budget-friendly for sure. So let's kind of jump into turning this thing on, I guess. We'll, we'll manually level the bed. There's, uh, we'll, we'll show you on the touchscreen, really nice touchscreen, but how to kind of fine-tune that bed. We'll get it manually set up, and then uh, we'll make a print. All right, we'll turn the machine on here, get it fired up. And we'll do the bed leveling. Now on the side here, when, during the assembly, you set this uh, limit switch. So this kind of stops it from, you know, going too far right into your bed. Now what I like to do is I like to set that limit switch just a tiny bit lower. So I can crank my bed down a little lower for these springs. Now for me, if the springs are compressed more, they're less likely to go out of whack than if they're barely compressed at all. So that's kind of what I like to do on these manual beds is just put that uh, limit switch down a little lower and then the bed's a little lower and those uh, springs hold nice and firm. But we'll start off here. We'll go to, there's a leveling button right here on the touch screen. And it's gonna have five points, so one through five. So basically if we hit one, it's gonna go, one's the front left there going to hit the limit switches, going to go to the corner there, and then it's going to go off to the position. Now some people like to use maybe a little piece of paper, however they want to do for leveling. I like to just actually get down there and look, and just to see that nozzle, no, there's a little bit of a a learning curve to leveling a bed like that, but you just, uh, you kind of lower lower these knobs up or down and you just want the, the tiniest bit of uh, kind of daylight between that nozzle and that bed. So that's one you can choose. They got one, two, three, four on the corners. We'll let's hit, hit five, see, or maybe you have to go in order. One, yeah, you probably do have to go in order. So we'll go through the steps here and we'll do two. We'll go through the all five. I don't have to show you all of those, but kind of get the gist of just kind of eyeballing it, looking through there, and we're going to get this bed all nice and level, and then we can do a print. All right, so I do have my filament all loaded up now. That just fed right in the tube, super easy. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the main screen. I'm going to go into file here. Now, the low SD card did come with a little Benchy file, so if you've seen 3D printer stuff, that's kind of a, a standard thing that you print is a low Benchy. And so I'm just gonna see how it goes. We're gonna just, before we upload anything into Kira and our own designs or anything like that, we're just gonna go right off that memory card. So right now I haven't even done anything with the computer yet. This is all just what they sent me. So we're gonna go that Ben G code. We're gonna open that up. It says start printing. Are you, are you ready to print this G code? I'm gonna go yes. And so now it's going to start going up to temp. So these are already preset and I am using the longer uh, filament brand. So we'll see how that prints, but the kind of temperatures are already set in place there. When we, when we start printing other stuff, when we go into Cura that, uh, that we can adjust to kind of, I don't know, higher or lower. Usually with PLA is what we're using. I go uh, 60 for bed temp and 220 for nozzle temp. So we'll kind of see see where we end there. So um, yeah, let's get started with the print here. All right, if you can see here, so the bed temp went to 60, that's what I normally do, but so it's just going to 200 for the nozzle. So we'll see, that's usually lower temp than I normally run. So we'll kind of see how, how that works out. All right, it's kind of laying the bead down the side. Now this first test here, this is where I'm gonna really get down and kind of adjust this bed for this first print to 
kind of make sure everything's going to be printing correctly. Might be a little low. One thing I can definitely tell you is it is nice and quiet. Just basically just a little fan noise and that's it. All right, we're going to just let that print. All right, so I got my benchy done here. Turned out pretty good. There are a little bit of lines kind of visible and also um, a little bit of that uh, threading, I guess. I'm not sure of stringiness. Uh, so I'm gonna try to adjust a few of these settings and I'm gonna use Cure, maybe uh, adjust that temperature a little bit. And we're gonna do a, big, uh, a bigger print, I guess. I think it's the 20 hour print Eiffel Tower. So uh, we'll get that started. All right, so I got the Eiffel Tower done. Now the detail turned out pretty good. There is still some of that stringing issue. So definitely gonna have to dial in those settings a little bit more, but not worried at all. Basically when it comes to 3D printers, you know, right out of the box, there's gonna be some adjustment. Each printer is gonna be a little different. So it's just kind of finding, finding those right settings um, and the right filament to use with those settings. So it's always a little bit of trial and error for a, a machine like this. Now, with that being said, if you do have any questions on this longer LK5 Pro, leave them in that comment section below. I will try my best to answer all of them if I can. And also, if you're interested in purchasing this machine, I'll provide the affiliate links in the description. So usually you can find the best price uh, with those affiliate links. And yeah, that really helps with the channel when you do that. So as always, I'm Chad from Chad DIY, and we'll see you on the next one.